The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, in the week approved an increase of 300% electricity tariff for Ban A customers, allowing power distribution companies to rise electricity prices for city dwellers from 68 naira to 225 naira per kilowatt per hour, with effect from April 1, 2024. The move has continued to generate reactions in many quarters, including the House of Representatives, where the Minority Caucus is calling on the federal government to prevail on the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission to rescind its decision. In the statement on Friday, Minority Leader uh, of the House, Kinsley Chinda, described the hike as, quote, inhuman and evil, asking the president to stop the decision and prioritize the welfare of Nigerians. Now, this comes as the regulatory agency on Friday also slammed a 200 million naira fine on the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, AEDC, for flouting the customer band classifications. The decision followed a detailed review and customer feedback, which revealed that AEDC had applied the new tariff to all customer bands, contrary to the order, which was designed to ensure fair billing practices. Meanwhile, the Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabu, while pleading for public understanding, says the federal government will continue to subsidize electricity for 85% of Nigerians to guarantee stable and reliable supply. He said this at the ministerial press briefing by the Minister of Information on Friday. Well, to help us make sense of all of these uh, issues raised by the new electricity tariff review, we have joining us in the studio, Power Sector Policy Analyst and the CEO of Sage Consulting and Communications, Bode Fadikbe. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. And we also have with us the Executive Director of Power Up Initiative for Electricity Rights and Consumer Rights Advocate, Aditayo Adegbenle. Thank you so much for joining us. And joining us from our overflow studio is the General Secretary of the Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, Peter Ambe. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the program. And so, welcome, gentlemen, to this uh, program. Uh, now, let's start with you, uh, Bode Fadikpe. I mean, what's been your review of uh, the uh, classifications by NEC, and then, of course, the increase uh, of this uh, tariff, and then the federal government saying that it's only to 15% of power consumers in the country that 85% still enjoy subsidy and will continue to do so? Uh the current the, the classification that we have today predates the the adjustments that has just been effected on the tariff. I think it came up around 2020 or so, where the customers uh, in the power sector were broken into five different uh, classes: band A, 20 hours and above, which is the uh, premium band. Uh, band B, 16 hours and above, but not up to 20 hours. Band C, 12 hours, 12, hours, 12 hours and above, but not up to 16 hours. Then Band D, 8 hours and above, but not up to 12 hours. And then what they call the lifeline, which is uh, 4 hours and above, but not up to 8 hours. Uh, from time, those ones have always lived on subsidy. And uh, even till now, government has not touched them. And incidentally, for band B, C, D, and E, government has not touched them. Do you, I mean, well, let me not say government, really. Mm -hmm. Let me say the, the, the sector or the market has allowed them to live on subsidy. Band A majorly are the ones that are affected. And like you rightly said, they, occup I mean, they constitute just about 15% of the entire customer population. And that 15% consumes 40% of the load that is available in the grid at any point in time. Okay. Uh, uh, if you look at the data that is available, uh, I, I think this time around it will be a little bit difficult to, to, to begin to say that government has not gone the right way. Because the latest statistics that is on ground is that subsidy had risen up to 2,900%. And by the time you look at the projection for the year, it was going to end up with about 2.9 trillion. That is 10% of the national budget for 2024. I, I, I think it would be very difficult to allow anybody to, al to say that that amount of subsidy should be allowed to rest on the budget for the year. Because if you take that 2.9 trillion alone and give it, for instance, to the market itself, not even to any other sector, yeah. take that 2.9 trillion alone and say, okay, uh, which, which, of the, which, which of the arms now, say, let's say metering, 
let's say, let's say, even discourse, let's even say discourse, because one question I've always asked is this, discourse, give us an inventory of the number of transformers you have bought since privatization. Give us an inventory of the number of tier 3 KV lines that you have reconducted. Give us an inventory of the 11 KV lines that you have reconducted or fresh ones that you have constructed. Give us an inventory of the injection substations that you have built since privatization till date. And let us see whether your, your investment in the market match exactly what you are supposed to do. So if you take that amount of money, for instance, and put it in the market, I'm sure, I'm very, very sure that our electricity will not be where it is today. Okay. Not to talk of giving it to transmission. So right. I think this at this time around, it's not going to be too. It's going to be very difficult to fault the market for removing the subsidy. All right, and I come to you, Adekbele. How do you react to government's posture, and then of course the regulator itself? Ah, uh, well, interestingly, um, we we kind of share the same line of, you know, from same kind of school of thought because uh, I think so far what we have. We Nigerians have been used to um, the subsidy on electricity. So over the years, what we've been doing is rolling over the inefficiencies, market shortfalls, and those, you know, um, we expect that government should continue to uh, subsidize electricity tariff. In fact, let me tell you this, because I think in uh, late last year, before this new year and January, one of the things I did personally was to go on a personal campaign across the country to ask the question, how sustainable is subsidy, you know, on, on electricity? And one thing I discover, you know, is that many people that have been, been, that have been talking about, you know, the hike, and if you want to look at it in real sense, this is not a hike. This is just removal of subsidy from the 15% bracket that okay, so enjoys in, in, in essence, this is what the ban A should have been paying. Paying normally for those who are getting regular power supply for 20 hours. minimum of twenty hours. Yeah, but the, the the complaint is that there's hardly anywhere you get that twenty hours. I cannot <laughs> I cannot agree with that um, with that. I mean, I've been on TV programs, I've been on radio, you know, I've been where people call to say, oh, this is our experience. I live in Joss, you know, and I don't run. I don't have a generator. I mean, I've been in just for my family lives there. We don't have any reason to have a generator. They take our lights within a few minutes, unless there is a major grid collapse. Or the, uh, so we have areas like that that are benefiting from old investments. Let me use that word: or infrastructure that is already established, that is advanced, mm -hmm. that has the capacity to take, you know, um, load to take energy. So it is easier for them to give us power supply and leave us on, while. People that are living in barely developed area are trying to pay the same amount of money that I will pay for the kind of service that I'm receiving. All right. You know, and this is the other end of that argument is that when we consider the cost of um, lack of electricity, right? When we're able to put a cost to it, if we're put, able to put the cost to uh, alternative sources of power, you know, like um, diesel, you know, generator, solar and everything. By the time you finish doing that calculation, you realize that that 225 that we are, they ask that 15 percent, you know, to the, the top brand, band to pay is almost like another 50 percent because uh, the, um, the cost of running alternative on diesel is about 400, 400 or 450 naira. Yeah, power. the power minister said 500 naira is. I mean, so, so, that, I mean, so, uh, you can, so when you compare that, 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 mm. that data, you are still, this guy, what we are saying, and naturally, everywhere in the world, grid power is naturally normally cheaper than alternative sources. All right, and uh, I'll, I'll be bringing a politician within our miss here. Uh, Peter, I may talk to us. I mean, the House of Representative Minority Caucus is saying that this is uh, uh, insensitive, and of course, your CUPP is also kicking against uh, the tariff increase. But the government, and of course, my analysts here keep saying that it's just for 15%. So, how do you react? When you talk about 15%, you talk about the plan of the government. Since the government came in, this government has been insensitive. They have, they have, they have carried out their policy without proper you know, study of whatever you know, economic hardship that Nigerians are going through. You can't just wake up overnight. You carry from a 66 naira per kilowatt to 225 naira. The, the percentage of increase for you know, about 300% is inhuman. You, you don't do things without you know, look at the human face and the negative 
negative effect that you have on people's pocket. You are you were elected to govern the Nigerian people. You are not elected to you know to continue to look for reason to remove subsidy to take decision. What has this government done? As the government has the Gen uh, Genkos and the Discos, what is the investment they are putting into the power sector, or is it the old infrastructure that Nigeria handed over to them that they are still using to make money, and then we keep we keep on suffering? Whatever the government has done now, you you have to look at the effect, the multiple side effect of whatever decision you are taking. You don't just take decision because you now feel that government is going to save money. Because what people are looking at, they are looking at government intent to save about 2.4 billion. He said about 2.9 trillion naira, 2.4 billion dollars or 2.9 trillion naira. These are not. This is not how you calculate the life of the people. The life of people is, is 1. beyond 1. money. 1.14 trillion naira. Yes, yeah, the life of the people is beyond what you calculate with the amount of money government will save. What first of all the government was 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 put in place to protect the life, you know, uh, property and lives of of Nigerians. And what you do is that you come in, you do your assessment of the environment, you look at what is possible and what is not possible. You are talking about urban area now, there's no light in the rural area. If whatever area you increase, there are shopping mall there, there are supermarkets that also have a side transfer what they call um, cost push inflation on the on product and services that are within those areas. And you, you, are, you are talking about how you have worked up, you remove subsidy on fuel, people are now buying it at a very high exorbitant rate, then you are pushing Nigeria to another extent. You don't look at all these things. All you are looking at is what to say, no, we are beyond that. This government must wake up and see that it was elected, it was put in place to work for the Nigerian people, and not the Nigerian people continue tying in a belt. There are places that you would have saved money. The National Assembly is budgeting over 30 billion naira for car park. They are budgeting I mean, how much for library. They are budgeting extra money for building of their, if, uh, how they call it, the vice president. Pro These are where you would have said, okay, let's stop for a while. Let's stabilize the economy. Let's see how we carry the Nigerian people along. Then we now come with this price increment. Whatever you are doing that does not have the human face of how to help Nigeria to, Nigerians to, to survive this hard economic reality, then that government is only trying to make sure you save money. Even if you are saving money, what is the purpose of you saving that money for? What is the alternative way you want to invest this money that would have impact positively on the life of Nigerians? All right, uh, there's what's called market reality. So if the government came into power and it <laughs> met with market realities, Good. what do you expect the government to do? Sit down and do nothing or take very hard decisions? In his, decision, in his own statement, he has said it, that there had to be an assessment. What is the, report that, what is the assessment report that the government had had with the Jenkos and the Discos? What, 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 what level of um, 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 transformer or whatever um, um, financial investment are these discos and just go made into the uh, electricity uh, uh, the subsector? This, we had the Electri uh, 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 Electricity Act in 2023 where you know, state governments can now even invest in this system. We are not saying that when you meet problem on the ground, the problem cannot still survive. What we are saying is that you need to do a proper study. Present that study before the National Assembly. Discuss with the National Assembly deeply on how to be able to do this on a gradual and face it out within the next four years. You cannot just do it as a punch and you know that you are not going to be any cost of it. It's the Nigerian, you know, workers, the Nigerian uh, artisans on the street, the business people on the street, who are going to bear the cost of this. You look at people who do fruit juice, people who do small-scale enterprises. That is the mainstay of the economy. You are going to push a lot of them out of business. You are look, I run, I run a computer school. I know the cost of how to run alternative source of energy. I know what it means to buy power from, from the, from the, from the discourse and just school. But the fact is that NEC, which is a regulatory body for to manage this process, did not carry the people along. Did not even envisage that there's a, there's a time frame. I will have to bring in. Uh, I will just have to bring in uh, Bode uh, back to talk to us about uh, this current market realities within the electricity uh, sector. Uh, we've seen um, the government actually saying that we're going to have a savings of 1.14 trillion naira uh, from this, and that subsidy will still be available for 85 percent of the consumers. How do you react to that? First of all, let me say this. Uh, uh, some of the answers I will give, I hope it doesn't present me as somebody who is an APC sympathizer. I, I, I'm not an APC sympathizer. I'm just a Nigerian that has a lot of interest in the power sector. But I think it is important to also let it be clearly said that the truth remains the truth. And I love the expression that you have used, market realities. Is it not true that there is inf uh, inflation in, in as a matter of fact, Nigeria's inflation rate is about the highest globally? Is it not true that 
dollar has moved upward. Is it not true? Is it not true that the cost of gas has moved from two dollars eighteen cents to two dollars forty five cents? Is it not true? Is it not also true that quite a number of the items that we use in the power sector are not locally sourced? Is it not true? Now, I, I hope I am going to be able to quote him uh, correctly. The late Dr. Shuba Okadibu was said to have, say, I mean, was quoted to have said that statistics is something that what it reveals is interesting, what it covers is even much more interesting. Now, what am I trying to say? We can come here and ban these statistics and say, okay, uh, this is what is that. But what is the market reality that is operating in this country today? Let's not forget the fact that this same power sector is operating within this harsh economic reality. They are not operating from outside the country. So anything that is happening here today is also affecting their own, their own uh, activities and operations. But you see, and I think this is where we must be able to draw the line. Government has said, okay, let this affect 15% for now. And let the 15% be affected by the, by the review. Let us still continue to carry the burden of 85% of the entire population. And I think... That makes a lot of sense. Government well, the thing is that many people don't trust government. I mean, when subsidy was removed, there was this talk here and there that is the high and mighty that use fuel a lot and all of that. I mean, on petroleum products. But today, you can see the reality. Almost everyone is affected. Uh, well, because they kept saying that it's only the rich that have three, four, five SUVs and all of that. So they have to pay. So that's the fear, actually, among some Nigerians. I, I admit that people fear that, oh, we may not be able to depend. But these are, these are things that are statistically driven. It's only up, I mean, today is 5th, I mean, today is 6th of April. It's just barely one week into the operations of the new tariff. Let's see what happens in the next few months, and then we'll be able to judge whether those who are affected are the real ones that are affected or not, or whether the 85% people are going to be affected or they are not going to be affected. One concern that I have is... Whether those, whether Nigerians will be honest enough to lead, to allow this tariff operate within the area that is affected. What am I trying to say? Now the manufacturers are saying we will be affected. But when you, what Tayo was trying to say, he was trying to do some bit of calculation. When you calculate what the manufacturers will benefit, I think very strongly that nobody should add a single cobalt to cost of product because. If we are able to achieve that 20 hours and above, what they will be spending on diesel can be moved to public power supply and even pay lesser. For them to enjoy one unit of electricity, they will need to buy diesel for 1,700, which will make them buy electricity at over 600 naira. And then from public power supply, they will be paying less than 300. So they are still saving over 300 naira. So where will the where will they now have the I mean where, where is the extra cost coming from? Okay, so Adegbunle, I want you to react to that um, issue. I mean, uh, can people actually trust the federal government on this uh, specific uh, issue that uh, the fifteen percent? Because you would have seen that AEDC has just been penalized right now yeah. because uh, they said fifteen percent, and I mean <laughs> the, the disco just went ahead and slammed it on everyone, Everybody, and that's yeah. trust issues actually. What do you make of that fine? Um, then, if people can believe Nigerian uh, government on this. Now, let me let me let me say this. Um, the question about whether we can trust government or not is, I think, the rhetoric. It's something that will always be there. It is always it has always been there. They didn't allow uh, President Gulag Jonathan to remove tar uh, subsidy in 2012 for that same reason. So I believe it's, that one is not a new excuse, right? But I think where the focus for us should be is, are the regulators able to enforce their own regulations? And even if you don't have the benefit of a long history. We have the experience of what happened within I mean, 24 hours, you know, of, uh, of the implementation of the new tariff, right? That ADC went ahead to implement on everybody. But now, ADC has been fined. As I, I know as I this afternoon, because I was speaking to one of the um, chief of operation, op operating officers of one of the discos this afternoon, yeah. and he was telling me that, sorry, he had to go off this phone call because he had to join 
you know, uh, the meeting with the regulators. So I know that regulators keep, you know, in, engaging, you know, the discourse at every point. Now, I believe our duty also is to try and remove emotions from this. What are the other uh, provisions that follow that tariff order? For instance, um, the fifteen percent that we are talking about, where are the bans? I will give you another uh, example. Just yesterday morning, Ikeja Electric published about ninety-five feeders that are supposed to be on that on band A, but on the list of approved bands from NEC, they have only forty-five. So I flagged it with their you know management and I said, hey, why did you have to publish this? This is what NEC said. And within two hours, they go back to me and say, oh, disregard it. So the guy was now hearing that they got a caution. In fact, the guy was like, thank you for saving me from another 200 million naira, <laughs> this thing. <laughs> so, fine, yeah, from you me. know, fine. So what I'm saying in effect is, uh, and I think somebody, uh, permit me to mention this, Dr. Wazir Adil on X came up and said, oh, I've been charged, I've been billed at 225 immediately, and I'm not on band A. He came back by night to say, Oh, thank you, I, I, um, AEDC, for downgrading, you know, yeah, my, my, yeah. my band because they've discovered that I don't, I'm not supposed to be on that band. That was because maybe probably he spoke up, right? Mm -hmm. And he was uh, sincere enough to come back and tell us, oh, this is the update on it. Yeah. So we, I believe that, yeah, whether issue of trust or no trust, it is not enough for us to sit down and complain. It's... And let me also say this, apologies. I was on radio about two days ago, and I insisted that anybody that calls should first of all tell me what band they belong before they made their complaint. Yeah, but how, pe how do people even know those bands? That and is interesting. Isn't the band discriminatory? I mean, gentlemen. There is no uh, discriminatory about the band. All right, I mentioned people, human rights activists are already mm. saying that. Just before I bring uh, Peter in, people are already saying that this classification is already discriminatory and unconstitutional. I mean, because you're pushing <laughs> people into one angle and making them feel bad for not just being able to be able to afford electricity and isn't the government meant to serve everyone irrespective of whether you have money or not i, I mean uh, you're the one i'm, I'm sorry oh okay to. well yeah. you see i mentioned earlier in my first um, my first uh, comment where i said um of course i don't think i, I think it's i think this is one of the fallouts and uh, one of the negative effects of the unitary system that we wanted to run in this country yeah. thinking that everybody can run at the same pace thinking that all of us can develop at the same pace I think that's a fallacy that we need to first of all face. Uh -huh. There will definitely be cities that are well developed, and there will always be places that are, you know, we are the ones developing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. No government. I mean, I was giving somebody an example today. Look at the way uh, 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 they are developing Abuja, for instance, in faces. Yeah. When they wanted to go to Katampi, government went in there, laid, you know, did all the uh, infrastructure, infrastructure there, yeah. structure, put everything there. And say, okay, these are the kind of, because of the kind of plan we have for this area, you can only build multi tenant units here. Yeah. Um, in other places, they say, okay, you're allowed to build as you like. But it's because they've already planned for that ahead. They've put the infrastructure there. Now, you want to compare that kind of a place to um, Dutse, right? Right here in Abuja, here, that everybody just take 50 by 50, put whatever infrastructure they want. The structure that they want you understand? To put yeah. So it's not planned. Okay. Now, you don't expect the kind of resources that they put into places like we or old Gariki development, even inside Gariki right there, there is Gariki village. The moment you go from area one and you get to Gariki village, you see the difference in... in so they in get layout. a different band. Yeah. Immediately. Naturally, they should get a different band. <laughs> all, all I expect right. that they will get a different band. All, all right. Uh, but it, uh, actually, on the AEDC, the 200 million are slammed on it. Uh, mm. Do you think it's justifiable? Uh, should uh, could AEDC have done something better? Was it like uh, an infrastructure problem, or it, it was just itchy fingers, or they just wanted to make money <laughs> out of their glitch. consumers? No, 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 <laughs> or system are, glitch, as they are saying. You are putting me on the spot because there is <laughs> there is no way I will talk. There, there is no way I will answer this question without putting the whips on the back of AEDC. Yeah. But quite frankly, I, I think when it comes to the issue of trust, I think a, an organization of this nature to do everything to make sure that they don't get anything wrong. Yeah. I mean, when I had the opportunity to serve in that organization, I know that any time that we, we are moving in the direction of tariff adjustment, it takes us almost about a week or two making sure that we dot the I's and we cross the T's. Mm -hmm. In fact, we do test wrong with staff and say, you go and vend, you go and vend, you go and vend. Let's see the outcome. Mm -hmm. So that by the time we are migrating to the public space, we ensure that even if there are going to be issues, 
the it will be zero point zero zero percent of problem that you will see and you can quickly correct it. Not an across board situation that we had with AEDC. So the issue of two hundred million. I'm not in a position to justify his, his <laughs> neck that we say, oh, it was yeah. adequate or it was inadequate. But for me, as, as a customer, as an analyst, the fact that they could even do that to them talks to, to I mean, speaks to the issue of reputation for me. It speaks to, because you, you raised a fundamental issue now. You said people are finding it difficult to trust government. And the moment there is trust deficit, I tell you the truth, most people are on this disco platform because going elsewhere is much more challenging. Otherwise, if it is for the telcos, I will take the same, break it, and jump to the <laughs> next. Jump to the next one. <laughs> I mean, I will right, so let's uh, bring you back, uh, Peter Ahmed. The Nigerian Labour Congress is now threatening uh, fire and brainstorm that they would uh, that this would have consequence if the government doesn't readjust and uh, the lawmakers have been speaking too uh, what what do you make of the threats by the nlc on this and uh, what should be the solution from your own perspective i, I think i'm on the same page with the nlc and the TU, well the tuc i saw the president spoke i'm on the same page with the lawmakers because government has to get its priorities right Government is not getting its priorities right. That's why government is concentrating. I think we should see this government as, as government of subsidy remover. Because it, the only concentration they have, or how to generate money, or how to you try to you know, run government, is to look at where um, the poor enjoy any form of, any form of government, um, uh, how they call it, uh, amenities, and they remove it. But they are not looking at where their own excess weight, financial weight on the country, it has to be adjusted so that the poor can breed. Look at the kind of budget that is being, that is put in place for the by a president's wife kitchen for the kind of vehicles that they are buying. The the the, well, the vehicles that was bought for national assembly are one sixty million by vehicle. So we need uh, by SUV. We need to look at this in holistically. You don't wake up overnight and then you remove all sort of subsidy. Yes, yeah, they say that the subsidies they enjoy is something that you know you have to do so that Nigeria can move on. What have we checked? Have we been able to take? proper statistics of the performance of the discos and the genkos. Are they putting back money generated from this, this, um, this industry, this, this electricity uh, subsector? Are they putting money from that place back to the, the business? We need to do all this, do all this before we can now say we're increasing tariff. For me, we, 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 uh, we, are not, we are not in support of what has done. Government must get its priorities right. Government must know that they are in government to be able to make the life of the people better and not to make it hard. Yeah, if I may chip in, uh, uh, Peter, the government says 85% of uh, the consumers, uh, electricity consumers, will still enjoy subsidy. What do you make you, of that? If you, if if you have 85% and only 15%... When, when, <laughs> when they came for the socialist, we said that I'm not a socialist, so I won't fight. When they came for the trade union, you say you are not a trade union. When they, when, but when they will come for you, you discover that it's too late. What government is doing is doing strict... It, the government is playing trick. Eventually, it will get to everybody in less than one, one week or one, one year. It will get to everybody. And it is, it is the ordinary masses on the street that are selling and buying that will bear this cost. For, for us, we believe that if government really wants to improve the life of Nigerians, government should look at proper way of generating revenue or blocking leakages so that you can have more money to do whatever investment you want to do to better the life of the people. The, the security is not improving. Government is not doing much in that area. For us, NEC um, um, did not sit down with a lot of other uh, stakeholders to conceptualize this idea of how better this process can be taken in phases. Because you cannot increase from 66 Naira to 225 Naira with about 300% um, increment, increment. No way this is done anywhere in the world. If government has in one phase, government must be able to see that there's a, there's a phase by phase process that you would have done this and it would have, you know, also reduce the, 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 the overnight burden on those who, the, the end, end users of this, uh, of uh, electricity, of, of power. So for, for, for us and for every other person in Nigeria that is bothered today, for businesses that are bothered today, they are genuinely bothered. But if people can speak whatever language they want to speak, or so whatever geometrics they want to use to discuss this system, the fact is that the honorary street, person on the street, wants to see that power improves, and I can challenge them today. Let them take me to anywhere in Abuja, anywhere that, they, that 20 hours of light, uninterrupted power exists, which is not true. That is not what we are what we're arguing is that <laughs> this right. increment is unjustified. Uh, all we, right. we cannot uh, continue to act without the interest of the people.
Well, the politician is not convinced that there's a 20 hours uh, power supply anywhere in Nigeria. Maybe just the presidential villa. Uh, but, well, I could see you actually disagreeing with him on some things. But very quickly, as we try to round off these conversations, uh, gentlemen, uh, let me start with you, Bode. Do yeah. you think that uh, uh, the federal government is doing enough uh, in terms of providing stable power supply? Because look at, for example, this CADA uh, equipment that's supposed to help to reduce, you know, the turnoff of uh, power grid. Yeah. Every now and then the national grid is collapsing. We were told around December that sometime mid, uh, mid this year, this CADA equipment would have been fully uh, installed. But up till now, nothing much has been heard about that. The presidential power initiative, I mean, so many terminologies, talks, I mean, that happened and Abakari had to go to Siemens in Germany, government to government, yet not much has happened. The minister tried to answer it yesterday, but a lot of people are not satisfied. Do you think that government can do better? Uh, until, until we are able to achieve a stable power sector, government will still be seen to be doing, I mean, what government will be seen to be doing will be inadequate. Absolutely. Until we are able to get if, as, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, it's just because we have not gotten there. That's why we are still saying some. I mean, twenty hours and above. Excuse me. In quite a number of countries all over the world, they speak of twenty-four hours. I mean, by now Nigeria should have gotten to the point where we can run our night economy as much as we run our day economy. And a fundamental driver of that duality is the amount of energy that is available 24-7 at every point in time. So, until government is able to do that, government is still doing, I mean, government is still not doing enough. enough. But coming back to your question, and I think this is very, very important. One, for us to also see that government is on the right track, there must be harmonization of policy. There are so many things that are scattered here and there, like you rightly said, presidential power initiative, uh, presidential initiative on metering, so many things. We need to harmonize all of these thoughts. We need to have a ministry of power that can sit on top of the sector and drive the sector to the point that the sector can deliver on its mandate. I mean, we're coming from 10 years of privatization, and some of the songs that we sang pre-privatization, we're still singing those songs <laughs> I mean, today. Uh, uh, For instance, metering. And those who, are, those who are criticizing the, the tariff, one of their major concerns for the, for the sharp criticism is because of the fact that they say some of those that are in this 15% bracket do not have meters. How do you then build them accurately? Accountability, fairness, and transparency. How can you build? So they are saying, uh, and if for 10 years we have not been able to achieve metering, then when exactly are we going to achieve it? So for me, whatever government is doing now, since we have not achieved 24-7, it is still inadequate. And so government must do more. All right, Aditayo, as we try to round off this conversation, yesterday the Minister of Power uh, said a lot of Nigerians uh, take power for granted in the country, saying that someone will put on a freezer for three or four days and when he or she is going out of his uh, residence, uh, even with, have, ha, with, with power supply constantly for three days, the person will not switch it off. So he's advising Nigerians to make good use of electricity. If your freezer is already frozen for two or three days, can you just switch it off power so that someone else will have power somewhere? I know some of the kind of initiatives <laughs> we should be looking at. <laughs> um, I, 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 unfortunately, you are putting me on the spot. <laughs> because those that, yeah, I mean, very, those, uh, those that are familiar with me knows yeah. that I'm not happy with the minister. Mm. And I have hit out at him on several occasions. And unfortunately for him, he was trying to preach a good thing, but it came out wrongly. What he was trying to preach is energy conservation. Yeah. Um, we waste a lot of energy in this country, no doubt. And we need to conserve it. And yes, as the minister, he is in the position to preach energy conservation. But you know, there's a way you put down a message. No matter how good the message is, you know, it comes, it, if you don't say it right, it comes out wrong. So, um, I'm not defending you, Mr. Minister, but what the minister wants to do was to pass the message that we need to also imbibe the culture of uh, energy conservation. And he is right, right? Because, you know, in our work in the field, you see places where, and I don't blame people too, right? But on one end, 
it is also the job of the discourse to go about educating these people, all you right. know, on the implication of all these things. So uh, Nigerians should also try and imbibe that culture of energy conservation. It's going to help us a lot. All right, we must thank you so much. Ade uh, Tayo uh, Adegbenle is the Executive Director of Power Up Initiative for Electricity Rights and Consumer Rights Ad uh, Advocate, who has been here to help Thanks us uh, enlighten me. our viewers on uh, the latest developments in the sector. And of course, uh, uh, the CEO of Sage Consulting and Communications, Bodhi Fadipe, who is also a former spokesman of the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, has joined us to help us understand the issues. Thank you so thank much you for, for joining us. And of course, the General Secretary of the Coalition of United Political Parties, uh, CPP Peter Aime has been <laughs> with us all through and he has said things the way uh, you know uh, their party members and politicians are saying this and we just hope that the government will listen to all that you've said here and will get a better power sector that actually works out for all of us all we must thank you so much gentlemen mm -hmm.